In an instant, Miami Dolphins player Kendrick Norton has his life turned upside down. That's when I realized how, how bad it was. I seen, you know, I was losing a lot of blood. His dreams of playing in the NFL abruptly end when a devastating car accident severs his left arm. Uh, as long as you're alive, you still have a chance to, you know, make the best of your life, so do, do as such. But Kendrick Norton is not looking for sympathy. He's looking to make a life-saving difference. In his first interview since being released from the hospital, Kendrick sat down with me for an exclusive interview to share his incredible story, revealing the moment he knew his arm was gone and how blood donors saved his life. I'm letting the fire department know that he's missing an arm, okay? It's literally missing. Like, the, the, half of his arm is missing. It doesn't matter if it hurts. You need to stop the bleeding. You can't lose more blood. I knew uh, at the accident um, that it was gone. When we got out of the car, I, I didn't have, it wasn't attached to me, so I already knew everything. That's when I realized how, how bad it was. I seen, you know, I was losing a lot of blood. What happened when the way that you were in the car that your arm was so severely impacted, do you know? I'm not really sure how, how it came to that. Uh, I, didn't I didn't feel it happen. Um, I just know when we were climbing out of the car, I was trying to do something and I realized that it wasn't there. And I was like, oh crap, okay, well, we gotta get out of the car. What's going through your mind at that moment? Um, to be honest, not much. I was just um, trying to, I was looking for my girlfriend, trying to make sure she was okay. So I ended up, you know, just laying, everyone's telling me to lay down. And there was a couple of pedestrians that helped me out a lot that I'm really appreciative to, uh, for. They, they were out there taking off their shirts and belts to put tourniquets on my arm. To, uh, to stop the bleeding. I was just laying there, um, you know, waiting on the ambulance, basically. When I first came to, um, I was a little angry about the accident, but my girlfriend and my mom, uh, they ended up just telling me, you know, you're still, you're still blessed to be alive. So after they, after they told me that, uh, I calmed down, and that's, where, that's when I became, you know, good spirits, and I uh, realized, you know, everything's gonna be okay because I'm still here, still be able to walk, still be able to talk. I just lost, you know, a piece of one of my arms. So, you know, it, it wasn't really, a, you know, a big deal. It was, but, you know, I still have my life. Did the doctors talk to you about getting blood and, and after the fact? Like, did you learn more about, you know, how important that was in saving your life? I knew that saved my life because I lost, I, you know, I could see on the scene how much, you know, blood I was losing. So I received over like 20 units of blood when I was in the hospital, like well over 20, probably close up to 30 units of uh, blood while I was in the hospital because I was bleeding a lot. So I, I, I just, I just really appreciate it. You are here because of blood donors. Right? Yes, yes. What would you want to say to those donors who helped save your life? Um, I just want to say thank you. Uh, if I could, I'd just give them a hug and let, you know, thank, tell them thank you, and they helped uh, save my life. Why show up here two weeks after this happens to you? Right. This is this is very important. Uh, very important to me. Once I realized, especially how much blood I lost and how much I received, I instantly uh, gravitated uh, towards um, you know the blood drives, and I got instantly got attached to it. Just coming uh, coming out and uh, show, you know showing my face here, showing how much appreciation I had for um, for the for the blood bank. What's it like to see some of your teammates, your coach? Uh, donating. Right, it was it was big, you know, seeing Coach Flores out there donating and, you know, a couple of members of the staff and, you know, people, uh, members of security just coming out to support. That was very big, you know, seeing them uh, do that, that. That was very encouraging. You're basically, you're turning pain into purpose, right. you know, a tragedy into a call to action. Right. Uh, what does that do to you at this time, you know, to see that people are rallying around and maybe people who had never donated before right. are showing up to do it because of you? It makes me feel good um, to know that I touched so many lives just just with my spirit and just, you know, keep, and I just keep pushing for, forward. So a lot of people are very motivated by that. And it touched a lot of people's lives. So I like seeing that. And I saw, I mean, just with really within days of you uh, being in the hospital, you're putting messages out on social media about encouraging people to donate blood. What made you do that? Once I realized uh, how much uh, how much of an impact that blood, that blood had on me and how much it saved, you know, it really saved my life. I just uh, wanted to do anything I could to uh, give, you know, I said, uh, I made a joke, I have to give these uh, people their, their 20 bags of blood back. I had to get it back for them because I used so much. So uh, that's, that's what I was uh, trying to do. You're a living example right. of 
a ready blood supply. Those guys that are out there giving blood right now, they're lifesavers. It doesn't matter that you could save a life from giving, a, giving your blood, so I encourage everyone to go out and do that. It's so commendable and your courage is remarkable. Thank you. What do you want people to learn from you, This what you're going through? Um, I just want people to uh, know, just don't let anything hold you down. Don't try not to dwell on anything, no matter how bad, how severe it is. Just, you know, just try to keep pushing and, um, and yeah, you'll, be, you'll be okay. Just keep pushing, you're gonna be all right. Uh, as long as you're alive, you still have a chance to, you know, make the best of your life, so do, do as such. Have you always been this positive? Uh, yes, I always tried to. Um, at, at a young age, my stepfather, you know, he taught me just, you know, keep moving. If it's a, if it's a problem, don't focus on the problem. Find a solution. So that's always been, um, you know, something that's been in my head. Where are you finding that that strength and that courage that you have? Is that just who Kendrick is? Yeah, that's just who I am. It's so it, it comes natural to me just to, you know, keep pushing, keep moving. So it doesn't. Um, I don't know if it comes from a, play, uh, you know, a certain place inside me. You know, it just comes from my faith and just knowing, you know, if I'm alive, everything's going to be okay.